Hello, James Bogue here. This is the Yoga Top 40. Next entry, Belinda Carlisle, Heaven is a Place on Earth. Big hit in the 1980s. And actually I understand, I've been told, that in recent years, Belinda Carlisle really likes to sing Kirtan. Kirtan is a Sanskrit word, it's from the root, wait, well, from the word Kirti. Kirti means glory. So Kirtan or Kirtanam is a singing practice in which we sing the glory of the supreme reality, of the ultimate reality of pure consciousness. And we sing songs that remind us of the glory of being alive. And when we sing, singing is a very great practice to invite yoga because it's a physical act, it's an energetic act, it's an emotional act. We have to use our mental acuity to focus on the lyrics and the melody. And very readily then, okay, mind, body, breath, energetic intent, they all get invited into togetherness. So it invites a yogic experience of togetherness and unity quite readily. Anyway, whether it's true that Belinda Carlisle is a big kirtan singer or not, I don't know. But I do know that this big hit of hers back from, I think it was around the mid 80s, has got a very nice yogic message, a very relevant yogic message. Heaven is a place on earth. Is it? Well, that's what yoga tells us and that's what many spiritual traditions tell us. That right here, right now, we can make our life a heaven or a hell. It's up to how we work with the reality of life. What do we know as a human being? We will experience pleasant things and we will experience unpleasant things. If we're the richest person in the world, if we have nothing, it's still likely that we'll experience ups and downs. We will have lovely experiences and not so lovely experiences. Today, for example, the sun is streaming through the window. It is February. Last, earlier in the week, it was very gray. So even though this might not be the optimal lighting to record a YouTube video, there's no way I'm gonna block out the sun, which I'm enjoying feeling so much after the gray. And this morning I woke up and the moon, it was full moon last night, more or less, the moon is hanging in the um, western sky. And then the sun has risen in a clear sky. I feel such beauty. I may not have all the things I might ever have dreamed of in my life, but I can still relish and experience the beauty of the touch of the sun on my skin. And I can also experience the feeling of longing for warmth after a cold, dark winter, for example. In the winter, not very long ago, it snowed and I rejoiced in the snow. I found it so beautiful. And then some days it's very dark and I think, oh, when will those bright days come again? All this is to say that when we're a human being, we experience Mishra Karma. We experience the beauty of close companionship. We experience the magnificence of the fresh fruit plucked straight from the tree or something like it. And we also experience the sorrow of loss and grief. This is the natural part of the human condition. So we experience agreeable things and we experience disagreeable things. Now, in the Belinda Carlisle song, in the chorus, she says, heaven is a place on earth. They say in heaven, love comes first. We'll make heaven a place on earth. So maybe you've heard that old story about the difference between heaven and hell. A person visits hell and he sees there's this beautiful banquet and everything is laid out. But no, nope, everybody's starving because the banquet is on this table and between them and the table, there is a moat with poison and fire and they can't get to it. And they've got these um, huge um, knives and forks and chopsticks, whatever, to try and get the food. But obviously with a huge long fork, you can't pick it up and put it in your mouth. They're all starving. And then the person goes to heaven and they see the situation is exactly the same. Beautiful banquets all laid out there in the middle and everybody's got these huge long um, instruments and between them where they're seated and where the food is, there is a big chasm. And yes, it is rather fiery down there. Who knows what's down there? But in heaven, everybody's having a fine old time because they're using their long instruments to feed the other people over the other side. What does the story tell us? Heaven and hell, <laughs> it's what we make of our life. And when we share 
And when we see the bigger picture, we can transform what looks like hell into heaven. When we put love first, now this word love, I'm gonna do another video about that shortly. But people have got lots of uh, reductive ideas about love. The way I understand love, really it means being present, it means caring. When we care, when we do things with presence and real attentive caring and carefulness and attentiveness, and we look at the bigger picture, then often we can transform difficult situations into lovely opportunities. When we bring ourselves together, this is one thing that yoga teaches us, and it teaches us in such a way that we cannot ignore it because it becomes part of our lived visceral experience. When we bring ourselves into togetherness, the sum of the parts is much greater than when they are all fragmented. We experience when we bring ourselves together that we are capable of doing things that we would not have imagined. And we start to realize this is also true in the macrocosm. When we work with other people, when we share, when we collaborate, ah, new possibilities emerge. And a situation that seemed like maybe there wasn't enough, actually there's more than enough. When we combine our various gifts, wow, actually there's plenty here. And so yoga reminds us, and I mean, it's not just yoga, I mean, open, our, open your eyes, <laughs> human being. This world is so munificent, this beautiful planet. We've been gifted with such amazing blessings. If we enter into respectful, recognizant, healthful relationship with our home, that is the ecos, if we start to free ourselves from the tyranny of economia, management of the home or the ecos, without ecologia, real understanding and wisdom in regard to the home, if we can free ourselves of this tyranny, which seems to be tyrannizing the world right now, that so much is being driven by corporations maniacal chasing after more and more profit and dominion and control and power, if we can ex extrapolate ourselves from that and start sharing a bit more and start realizing that if we want to be really healthy, we cannot profit at the expense of somebody else or some other land. We have to look after the whole of the system. When we start practicing yoga, if we start working with the physical body and our energy, we start to realize, hmm, I cannot really be well at the expense of some parts of myself. So as we start to expand that understanding out into the wider ecos, we realize, yes, we need to care for the whole planet. We need to care for the whole system and all its parts. So if I'm concerned about the climate, it's not sensible to get obsessed about one thing, such as carbon. The environment is a very complex system. It's not that one thing is gonna solve the problem of being in a completely disconnected relationship with it. Rather, let's get connected. Rather, let's look at it with that bigger perspective. And if we do, maybe we can transform that which seems like a hell of a problem into a beautiful situation in which we can inhabit this amazing planet in a way where there's enough for everybody to actually thrive. But we cannot do this through greed. We cannot do this through exploitation. Yoga teaches this. If I am greedy, for example, in a physical yoga practice, if I really enjoy the sensations of doing a certain type of physical practice, if I do it too much, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna suffer, I'm gonna pay the price. Similarly, 
if I enjoy some other type of practice, if I just do that, it's not going to work. Different techniques can be wonderfully supportive, but the technique is not the practice. The practice is to bring harmony, wholeness, cohesion, congruence into all of ourselves. So this is one of the reasons why yoga is such a powerful practice, because the body does not lie. So when at the microcosmic level we honestly start to enter into a more respectful relationship with the field, the earth of our being, it really propels us into a state of awareness that helps us interact with the wider ecos in a more sustainable way. So heaven is a place on earth, it can be. But in order for us to do that, in order for us to transform this world in which there is such ridiculous uh, disparity of wealth, it's come to a, such an extreme that is completely, I would, at least from my perspective, it's beyond the natural. Yes, in nature we have hierarchies for sure, but you don't have a hierarchy in, in the natural world such that all of, well, half of the money is concentrated in the hands of literally, um, well, less than a billionth of the population. It's just unnatural. Natural systems, they're in balance. Within the natural balance, there is a certain degree of imbalance that's part of that amazing dance of reality. But when things get too imbalanced, then it gets hellish. As conscious human beings, our challenge is to see, ah, we have colluded in the development of a hellish imbalance, but we have conscious awareness. We have amazing gifts. Let's use them and let's transform this hellish imbalance into an abundant Eden, into a paradise, into a heaven, right here on earth.